Welcome back, everybody, to another game of Popper. We are playing some Golgari Brownscale in the replay room this time because uh, I had a little problem with my recording device. It uh, corrupted the file. Should be fixed now. We're going up against today uh, the uh, Demir 79 card special. Never seen this before. A little, little weird, but, I mean, the deck is... If you're playing Control, you can basically play as many cards you want, I guess, um, <laughs> as long as you, you know, adjust the land count and whatever, but, uh, we kind of trampled all over them, and, uh, we'll, we'll see that right now. So we start off with a pretty good hand with Tortured Existence, uh, double Jungle Hollow, uh, oh yeah, we draw the second Jungle Hollow, um, at this point I see that he's probably on Demir, I kind of guessed that because of the card count, decide to try and bait with the first Tortured Existence, which works, I get a, um, Counterspell out of the way, you only need to resolve one. And uh, I do plan on uh, going with, like, Wild Mongrel into Torch Existence next. But seeing how the Wild Mongrel resolves, I'm thinking that he's probably wise. So I uh, hold back, and I plan on doing it uh, the next turn. Though now, uh, because of my Golgari Rot Farm, I decided with the Arrogant Worm instead. See if he's got some counter magic. I don't believe he does. Yeah, so it just resolves. I choose black. Uh, black helps. Uh, it's a good habit to get into. Uh, for when going up against Dumir, because you uh, get around Doomblade and stuff like that. Decide to get another Arrogant Worm in. This time, I'll be able to uh, hopefully play my Tortured Existence. And he lets the Arrogant Worm resolves, which makes me think that he's probably not going to counter this, but he does, which surprised me. Oh, no, wait, no, he doesn't. <laughs> there we go. He just decides to go over the thing twice, and then Innocent Blood kind of gets there. But we're applying so much pressure to him. We've just got him on the ropes right now, so not much he could have done here. He, he was just a little bit too slow. However, here's what happens. Wait, wait for it. Wait for it. There we go, Crypt Incursion. All right, let's just stop that right there. So, Crypt Incursion, three mana, instant. Really, really good card. Exile all creature cards from Tarkov Player's Graveyard. You gain three life for each card. Exile this way. Uh, you see a lot of Demir decks play this as a one of in their main board. Sometimes they have the extra one in their sideboard. And, uh, yeah, very, very good against decks like Dead Dog. Uh, puts you out of range of uh, their damage. Three life per creature in Graveyard is huge. If this had been really late in the game and I'd had a huge Graveyard from, you know, like Dredging or something, like, he would have gotten to, you know, 50-something life or something, and, and it just really slows down the game, as well as crippling the uh, Dredging opponent. In our case, it's only about the game of six life. I kind of hesitate... Uh, trying to see, maybe I want my Vampire Hounds or something. I decided to just discard the Arrogant Worm to the uh, Wild Mongrel, as it uh, it does bring them down to six anyways, and it's going to give me a, a really big board presence. So, yeah. They're still very, very dead on board. Uh, the only thing I, I really need to be concerned about is um, Evancar's Justice, but that still puts them dead to Arrogant Worm. So that's the way the first game ends. Uh, let's go off to game two. So let's take a look at our sideboard uh, to see what, what I sideboarded because I don't remember. Uh, so I took out two Basking Root Wallas um, and all the Fume Spitters. Uh, this is not a deck that runs creatures. Uh, again, I, I'm expecting that they're on the, the um, Evancar's Justice kind of win condition. Be, just because of the size of the deck, it's probably like a mystical teaching style thing. So yeah, I went for the Fume Spitters and took out Basking... Uh, I took out the Fume Spitters, took out the Basking Root Wallas, and just put in um, four Duress... Uh, and the Thrall Surgeon, and what else did I put in there? Mm, uh, darn it, I don't remember. But, uh, yeah, that's the gist of it. So basically try and control their hand as much as possible. We uh, had to mulligan. Golgari Rot Farm, uh, when it's your only land, is not the great hand. We've got kind of an awkward hand here because it has double Golgari Rot Farm, and we have a two-drop, so it's kind of weird, and we can't play our Basking Root Walla either, so kind of, yeah, kind of awkward for us. I would rather have a, a tap land there. So we end up going with double Carrion Feeder into Wild Mongrel. Uh, carrion Feeders are very, very good at fighting uh, removal and stuff. So, little, it, I don't think it ended up mattering too much. We end up going for our <laughs> Hardcast Rootwalla and uh, wasting a lot of mana. These Rot Farms making it a little inefficient for us. So here I just sack the Rootwalla out of this figure, as you can see. Uh, just makes the Carrion Feeder bigger, but then I think he just has double Innocent Blood. Yeah, there you go. And that word 5 mana, which means I can start hard casting Arrogant Worms. Uh, I think he's got a Exclude for that. Nope. Okay, he just thinks twice. And then probably has Removal. 
I think I struggled for quite a while. Yeah, there you go. Another Innocent Blood. Uh, but Torch Existence was a really, really good deal. I tried to bait it out with the uh, Golgaria Brown Scale. It worked, which means that now I'm in a really good position to start grinding out the game. Opponent's down to three cards as well, and uh, they start flooding like crazy. Uh, I did end up uh, dredging back the Golgari Brown Scale, end up with Triple Arrogant Worm, and I <laughs> accidentally passed my turn on their end step and not do anything. So here, on their end step, again, now, now I'm going for the Arrogant Worm. And uh, get back, I think, a uh, Carrion Feeder. Yeah, there you go. He counters it, but I've still got my Carrion Feeder. Trying to get it back. There we go. And then we've got the Crypt Incursion that put them up to 38 life. I'm feeling pretty discouraged at this point. Though again, they're down to two cards. Yeah, and I think after this Edict, they have just the Chainer's Edict. Yeah, and then uh, I mess up here uh, where I should have gotten with the um, Torch Existence. I should have gotten back the Carrion Feeder so that I could play it at the same time as the Arrogant Worm. So that I'd have uh, protection from Chainer's Edict. Uh, instead, I opt to get the Vampire Hounds, which was a, a pretty big misplay. Opponent is, yeah, just digging at this point. They just flash back the Chainer's Edict, and they're actually holding an Ash Barons in hand. So, yeah, decide to go for the Arrogant Worm and Carrion Feeder this time. Smartened up. There we go. And, uh, yeah, Jungle Hollow... Yeah, opponent shows me they just had a land in hand, trying to thin out their deck, I guess. <laughs> thin out their 80-card deck. Here we go. Now we start swinging in for five. We, uh, I decide to get back my Arrogant Worm, which I can play right away and just get back the Vampire Hounds anyways. Puts more pressure on them, and the Arrogant Worm is a much better threat than the Vampire Hounds anyways. Since my hand is has no creatures. Uh, complete Disregard exiles the creature, so I sacrifice Carrion Feeder to itself to keep it in my graveyard. And we draw Wild Mongrel, which is really, really good for us. As that really puts a lot of pressure on them. And now our opponent draws some gas. They go for Think Twice, which draws them tons of cards into Relic of Progenitus. Uh, luckily, I've got a couple of Tortured Existences that didn't get exiled with Crypt Incursion. And here we just get in for a crap ton of damage. And I discard Swamp here, just so I can pad out my graveyard a little bit more. And keep, hopefully, my Carrion Feeder in there. They're also very dead next turn. Not anymore. So they drew and uh, wanted to see what they could do, but that's it. I've got, let's see, uh, 8, 10, 11, 12, and then discarding three cards that I would have in hand next turn. That's exactly 15, so they didn't quite make it, even though they tried to draw themselves out of it. So that's the game. Uh, I am not sure about the eight, you know 79-card deck, what that was about, but uh, we beat it, and that was the last... Uh, match of our um, our first league with the deck, uh, which we ended up going three two. So uh, went in the clear, made some uh, made some uh, made one chest and got my money back. So hey, the deck is really good, pretty pretty solid deck. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you next time.